So it's time to talk about the iPhone when it comes to astrophotography. I have myself just upgraded from the iPhone 10 to the newest and greatest at the time of recording this video, iPhone 14 Pro, not Max, iPhone 14 Pro, <laughs> which is this um, that I have right here in my hand. And I wanted to test it out if it's any good for astrophotography and it, if it can compare to the images that I can get with my bigger cameras like the Canon EOS R or Sony a7S II. Is it any good? Can it produce any usable uh, images for night sky photography? Kinda, you know? So uh, let's talk about it and let me explain what I mean because there are some problems with the iPhone. However, it's possible. Let me tell you. So the iPhone 14 Pro, uh, on the outside, it's not very much different from the, its predecessor, the iPhone 13 Pro. Uh, it still has three cameras on the back, looks very similar, um, but there have been some significant upgrades to the cameras, especially the main camera and the ultra-wide camera. In this video, however, I'll be focusing only on the main camera, the sort of standard wide, uh, not the ultra-wide, because that's the one that is the best in low light. Um, and this is the only one that really makes sense to attempt doing any astrophotography with. So the main camera on the 14 Pro is now uh, 65, the, the sensor is 65% larger than the sensor on the main camera on the iPhone 13 Pro. And larger sensors are typically good for astrophotography because they do collect more light, so that is great. The um, focal length on this camera is now 24 millimeters instead of 26, which was previously. Not that big of a difference. I usually do a Milky Way sort of wide field photography with a Sigma 28 millimeters that I have right here on my Canon EOS R. So 24, 26, um, of course, it's, a, it's an equivalent of a full frame, full frame lens, that giving you the same sort of field of view that a 24 mil lens would give you on a full frame camera. And that's a perfect focal length for Milky Way photography, wide field, that kind of astrophotography. Uh, they claim that the lens is f7, f1.78, which is, wow, pretty bright, right? Uh, but of course, it's not, it's not really the same as a 1.8 lens on a full-frame camera. Uh, when we uh, multiply it by the crop factor, we get uh, f6.3. So this is the effective sort of, if you took a 6.3 lens on a full-frame camera, it would collect the same amount of light that this lens on the iPhone. So 6.3 is definitely not as good as 1.8, but it's not that, um, it's not the worst thing, you know? 6.3 is, is, is not something that is detrimental when it comes to astrophotography. Uh, we have telescopes that have higher focal ratios. We have, for instance, long uh, doublet refractors that have a focal ratio of f7, f9, perfectly normal. We have schmidt cassegrain telescopes that have a focal ratio of f10 or even higher, so they collect even less light in theory. And these are telescopes, right? So these are made for astronomy and astrophotography. So 6.3 equivalent um, focal ratio on the iPhone, not the worst. Uh, of, also the sensor, uh, I mentioned it's 65% larger and it has a crop factor of, uh, of 3.5 um, when you compare it to a full frame camera. And again, 3.5 crop factor is not um, the worst thing. We have uh, astronomy, dedicated astronomy cameras, for instance, from ZW, I'm using the ASI 294mm Pro with my telescope. This one has the crop factor of two, so it's like a micro four thirds camera. And we, and ZW also makes uh, cameras with even smaller sensors, uh, especially for like planetary imaging, it pays off to have a very small sensor. Uh, and you can totally use that for astrophotography. So the size of the sensor is not the problem. The uh, sort of focal ratio of the lens is not the problem. So it should be perfectly fine. And that's what I kind of, you know, was hoping that it would happen. I uh, tried to put this phone on a small portable astro tracker, the move should move, which I think for bigger cameras, like full frame cameras, it's not really suitable. I mean, it can hold it, but you know, I don't, I don't really trust uh, putting a big heavy lens and a heavy camera on a small tracker like this, but for a phone, I thought it would be perfect. So I've downloaded a actually a bunch of different uh, sort of pro camera apps for the iPhone.
phone because the built-in app does not allow you to have any sort of control over the shutter speed and the ISO. So I thought a pro camera app would do that and they do. However, here is the problem. There seems to be a hard limitation on iOS that you cannot have a single exposure longer than one second. And one second, it's not that long. I thought I would be able to put this on a tracker and have an exposure for like, I don't know, a minute, two minutes, four minutes, uh, tracking the sky and with a 6.3 focal ratio and the sensor size with a crop factor of 3.5, I would get decent images. And also the phone is able to capture raw images. So I thought it's gonna be fine, right? But no, there's a hard limit and you cannot go beyond one second of an exposure time in a single photo. There are some apps like, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about some of the apps that I tried that allow you to have exposures of like 30 seconds, one minute, couple of minutes. They say that they give you the long exposure effect and you don't even need to have an ND filter to do this in daytime, which should really raise a red flag in your head if you know a thing or two about photography, because you just cannot have a single exposure of a couple of seconds long, especially a couple of minutes long in daytime without any NDs and just magically work like that. Um, you would overexpose your photo completely. It will be pure white if you try to do this with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So they are th those apps are really taking short exposures, stacking them together, averaging them out, doing some magic. But if you don't have enough light in this single exposure that they are using for averaging, you're not gonna produce any decent images. And let me show you because I tried. I had this on the tracker and I was, um, I was trying a bunch of different apps, so uh, I was actually shooting here. Uh, this sort of landscape behind me, we have some, we have some trees here. We have a mountain in the distance, and the Milky Way was sort of going vertically like this. Uh, I'm filming this in September from the northern hemisphere, so the Milky Way is pretty much like from my latitude, 50 degrees north. The core of the Milky Way is already behind the horizon, so I would get some part of the rift of the Milky Way up above. Uh, I'm going to show you a photo that I have taken with this setup, the Sigma 28 and the ESR, sort of for reference. Actually, I can show it to you at the very beginning so you know what we are talking about. So this is the shot that I took with my big camera. This is a single exposure. As you can see, you have some trees uh, at the bottom and you have the Milky Way sort of going up like this. Uh, and as you can see, the Milky Way is not super bright. It's not uh, like what you see on Instagram. This is just a single exposure. The location is not the darkest. It's Bortle 4, 5-ish. So, you know, we should manage our expectations of what we can get out of the phone if this is what we can get with a big camera. So keep that in mind. So the first app that I have tried is the app called Slow Shutter. This is the app that has been on the market for a long time for iOS. And I tried a 60 seconds exposure, as you can see here in the EXIF, it claims that it's a 30 seconds, 30 seconds exposure. And it looks like absolute trash. This, there's, there's just nothing there. There is some oversaturated green here, nothing, no details in the trees, no details in the sky, absolute garbage. So when I saw that, I thought, wow, this is not gonna work. So I tried a different app. Um, this is the app called Even Longer. And this is a 31 seconds of an exposure. It actually tells you that it took 32 frames of like one second and it averaged them out. So at least it's not lying to you that it's true 30 seconds exposure. And even in the exit, you can see there is one second here as the shutter speed. So it just took a bunch of one second images, which is the longest that you can take in, in iOS. And it tried to average them out. And as you can see, there's pretty much nothing here. Only the brightest star of the constellation Aquila is visible here, but it's not even in focus. So again, total trash. Um, then the next one is uh, even longer, the same app with three minutes of an exposure time, like total, maybe it's not an, um, it's not an exposure time, it's more like an integration time. Three minutes and it took 181 frames in three minutes and it tried to average it out and we can start to see something. It still looks like trash. Um, but at least it is something. Um, then I tried the same app, same sort of integration time, but a different mode. This app has different modes. There is a low light mode, which I tried previously. This is with the low light mode. And this one is with the star trails mode. So I don't really know 
they're supposedly doing something different uh, sort of behind the scenes but the result is also pretty terrible um, then I tried what is this this is a single shot Mm, sort of from the main camera without night mode which I'm gonna get into in just a second so again here in a single shot this is like 1 30th of, of, of a second we see nothing here and um, then we have another app which is called ProCam 8 uh, 30 seconds they claim in the exif that it is a 30 seconds exposure I don't think it is it probably is not and again not much we can see in the sky and now this is where it gets interesting because um, well I can conclude that none of the third-party apps is be will be able to capture anything however there is also this native night mode on the iPhones on iOS and with night mode if you put your camera on a tripod it recognizes that the camera is not in motion and it lets you take a 30 seconds exposure sort of I don't know if it's taking an actual 30 seconds exposure, I think not. But it is sort of exposing for 30 seconds and doing some magic behind the scenes. And it can spew out a raw image again, which will be useful, which I'm going to show in just a second. So this is what I got using the night mode on the iPhone sort of stock camera application. Uh, on a tracker, sort of stationary, 30 seconds. And we can clearly see the Milky Way sort of band going up here. It's still not very detailed. As you can see, there's some heavy, very heavy noise reduction applied here. So there is this splotchiness, uh, but at least it's in focus. And if you sort of zoom out, you can clearly see that the Milky Way is there. So this is definitely the best that we have seen so far. Um, this is again sort of the same scene and now I what I have done is I have taken this um, into my computer this is a true DNG image uh, if we uh, observe the EXIF here it tells you that it's a 10 seconds of an exposure so if it is actually taking 10 seconds of an exposure it is definitely better than one second exposure that's why it's better uh, that's why it looks better it says that it used ISO 10,000 which is you know pretty high but not terribly high if we stack a bunch of exposures with ISO 10,000 from a mirrorless camera the result would be pretty decent so 10 seconds 10,000 for a single shot looks pretty good and this is sort of a quick and dirty edit that I got from Lightroom mobile here as you can see I dialed down the noise reduction way back so there is no splotchiness there is however noise because again 10,000 ISO is something that will produce visible noise but the result looks pretty good and I think uh, if I stacked a bunch of exposures using this mode the night mode on the stock camera app I could actually produce some decent results there is uh, another edit that I have done this one is on Lightroom desktop so again kind of similar result as you can see there is um, the dynamic range is definitely not as good as with a mirrorless camera here on the bottom as you can see in this very very deep shadows there is some magenta you know looks kind of like an amp glow this is probably an artifact of what the iphone is trying to do in night mode uh, so this is something to keep in mind as you can see again for reference this is the image from the eos r and as you can see there is no no problem here in the shadow so the dynamic range is definitely going to be better on a bigger camera but what i also tried um the following day unfortunately it was kind of cloudy so the result is not going to be the best but i tried to capture um this is um this is the we have cassiopeia on the left we have jupiter here the bright spot on the right and even we have andromeda in the center this is again what i got straight from the iphone so there's some heavy noise reduction here uh, in night mode but you could clearly see you know cassiopeia you can see the andromeda you can see jupiter doesn't look really bad and I took a bunch of exposures uh, nine to be uh, specific unfortunately I had clouds so if I didn't have clouds sorry I would have an even better result but I tried to stack it in PixInsight and this is what I got after stacking and there's actually quite a lot of detail here we have again Cassiopeia on the left Andromeda here in the center the clouds got sort of averaged out a little bit but there's still the trace of the cloud unfortunately but it looks pretty decent and if we compare sort of uh, I zoomed in on Cassiopeia here and here on the top you can see the stacked version nine exposures stacked and on the bottom you have a single exposure so there's definitely way more noise on the single exposure so if I stacked even more exposures I would reduce the noise even more in an organic way without doing heavy sort of 
algorithmic noise reduction, which uh, leaves us with splotchiness and, and kind of, you know, this is what we saw from straight from the iPhone. So if I tried, um, I think if I, if I took more exposures in a darker location with no clouds in the sky, the results could actually be pretty decent. So what's the conclusion? Well, I think the new iPhone 14 Pro with the 65% bigger sensor and with um, sort of true 6.3 focal ratio equivalent of a full frame camera, it is actually capable of capturing uh, quite a lot of detail for sort of landscape astro shots, as you can see. Uh, will I recommend using a phone for astrophotography over a, over a camera like this? No. Definitely a bigger camera with a bigger lens is always going to be better. Are there other smartphones that are better suited for astrophotography than the iPhone 14 Pro? Yes, there are some, some excellent smartphones from like Google Pixel or Samsung that are even better. But that is not the point of this video because a lot of people are just not willing to switch to a different brand of the phone because the phone is not just something that you use for photography, you know, I'm not willing to switch to a different brand of the phone because I am deep in the Apple ecosystem. I have a MacBook, I'm, use, I'm used to using AirDrop to transfer files, I'm using iMessage to communicate with my friends and family, I'm using a whole bunch of different features from iOS that I don't want to give up just to have a slightly better camera. If, and if I'm serious about doing my astrophotography, I would use choose a bigger camera anyways. so. If you are just getting into astrophotography and you want to start and you don't have a bigger camera, definitely with the new iPhone, you can get some decent images. I would recommend getting a small tracker, like a move should move, like I mentioned, and use the night mode in the stock camera. Don't try to buy something on App Store, like a third party camera. It's not going to be good because there's a hard limitation of one second exposure and there's just only so much people can do with algorithms. And if you have so little light in a single exposure you're just not going to pull out the detail so apple has the upper hand in the stock camera with the night mode they can and they are exposing for sure for longer than one second the single exposure i don't know why they are capping it in ios and not letting third-party developers use longer exposures it looks like kind of a move from apple which apple is kind of known for so maybe someday they will enable, there's no reason not to have a longer exposure than one second. That's a stupid limitation, but it is what it is for now. And as you can, as you saw in the images that I showed you, you can actually get something decent already. I will be trying to use the iPhone in darker locations. So stay tuned in my Instagram and YouTube. I will be posting some more results if I get better results in darker locations and without clouds in the sky, hopefully. So stay tuned for that, but for now, with the new iPhones, you can, in fact, produce somewhat decent images. So yeah, that's the new iPhone 14 Pro. I would definitely recommend the upgrade, especially since uh, if you're upgrading from an older phone like an iPhone 10 or 11, there's a big difference. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for more uh, from me, YouTube, Instagram, like I mentioned. See you in the next video and clear skies. Bye bye.